I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Oliver Gale, the founder of Bit.com and Base2 Ventures. Oliver, it's great to see you today and uh, welcome to the show. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Ashton. It's also a pleasure to be here, man. I'm very excited to learn a little bit about Bit.com. I know you guys have some major updates you're working on. So if you would, for the audience, give a, you know, an overview of the company and the payment solutions that you guys are providing. Sure. Bit.com was founded in 2013 in Barbados by myself and my co-founder, Gabriel Abed. Uh, we started the company to build a digital asset exchange, uh, primarily starting with Bitcoin and to engage in education and awareness around the Caribbean. We found very quickly that there were a number of problems with correspondent banking issues and financial inclusion in the Caribbean that made it very difficult to run the exchange with any significant volumes. And so we pivoted a little bit. And in 2016, uh, having built a cryptocurrency wallet and deploying an ATM, uh, in Barbados along the way, we issued the uh, digital Barbadian dollar in February 2016 on the Colored Coins protocol. And that got the attention of Dr. Patrick Byrne and Overstock. And shortly thereafter, Overstock invested into our Series A round and actually took the whole Series A round with a mission of creating central bank digital currencies. And so that investment was closed in April of 2016. And if you fast forward a year from that date, Bit.com released a mobile money network called M Money in Barbados, powered by the digital Barbadian dollar. And that network over 2018 has been growing fantastically. The last uh, quarterly report showed a 77% quarter on quarter growth in merchant traction. And so, that was fantastic, and I'm very pleased to report that after a couple of years now of engagement with central banks around the Caribbean and some internationally, we have closed a watershed contract with the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank for Bit.com to build their central bank digital currency payment network on blockchain technology to issue legal tender to one of three cur four currency unions in the world to 630,000 people, and this is the first time, uh, for the second time, that Bit.com has done something um, globally that no one else has. Wow, congratulations, Oliver, that sounds amazing. A uh, huge breakthrough for the digital dollar, and uh, to have Overstock involved as well, sounds like a, you know, re very promising. So, um, I'm, I'm interested to learn more. You know, what, I, it sounds like you guys are providing, you know, a bunch of different services. Um, so, and are you targeting this to you know the everyday people in Barbados, or is this more for the central banks? You know, who are your guys's primary customers? We have a bottom up and a top down approach. When you're re-architecting a financial system, namely the one that powers 99.9% .9 of transactions in the global economy today, that being the as it is currently central bank governed monies all around the world, you have to uh, be daring and adventurous on both sides of the spectrum. So we built a stack, the M Money stack is deployed in Barbados by one of the Bit Inc subsidiary companies. And we run that as a self-regulated entity in the sandbox environment, which is overseen by the Central Bank of Barbados and the Financial Services Commission. And that serves our primary mission, which is to empower people. And we do that in Barbados, 60% in the Caribbean, broadly speaking, 60% of people are either unbanked or underbanked. So there's a huge market of people who have need of financial services. And we believe that blockchain technology and peer-to-peer -peer transactions are quite possibly the ultimate way of doing this. So we deploy and money to prove the concept that blockchain enabled mobile money is a game changer for people. And then simultaneously, we've been engaged in business development, education, regulatory awareness, uh, and, and really petitioning uh, governments, United Nations, World Bank, uh, Commonwealth Secretariat, you name it, to embrace the concept of central bank issued digital currencies using a distributed ledger. And 
that sales process has taken years really to go through that with the central bank and this agreement that we have for the pilot project deployed into the economy directly with East Lake Caribbean Central Bank is the first of what we expect to be many because the advantages of distributed ledgers are so clear for anybody who's ever used anything like uh, Bitcoin before to see the the peer-to-peer -peer nature, the accountability, the auditability, transparency, the use of cryptography, all of these things bring efficiencies to a payment system. And BIT's mission is to empower people and enable central banks to harness that incredible power that blockchain technology brings. That's awesome, Oliver. Now, you guys have been working on this for a long time, and I also expect when there are major transitions like this that these things don't, you know, happen for everybody in the in the country overnight. So, what does the you know the upcoming roadmap and the timeline lo look like for integrations and putting this into the mainstream economy? You know, is this something that's already happening for you know, your everyday people, or when are they really going to start seeing the change and 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 using this themselves? It's happening already in Barbados. We've deployed the uh, the M money stack. And so what that facilitates is the peer-to-peer -peer transactions and for essentially the education process and the adoption process to begin in Barbados. However, that is done within a sandbox environment. So we have the approval of the regulators, but the difference with the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank is this is a pilot project which is spearheaded by them. So all financial institutions, bank and non-bank, in the nine islands that make up the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union will be invited to partake in the pilot project. It's broken into two phases. So the first phase is 12 months where we build the central bank digital currency ledger to issue the digital fiat currency in collaboration with the central bank itself meeting their requirements. And then there's a second phase of the project which is six months where the ledger will be deployed live and digital Eastern Caribbean dollars will be deployed into the economy with the participating financial institutions. And we take the real world data and feedback from that. And uh, the objective being in 18 months from March 2019, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank will be in a position to say the pilot is successful. And this digital Eastern Caribbean dollar, which is being used by the central bank and bit through its M money platform is now a legal tender instrument. And that again is game changing, as game changing as this pilot project and software development contract itself. Wow, that's that's amazing. That that is completely game changing. And uh, it sounds like you're well on your way. And you know, business plans and businesses, they always come up, there always are some obstacles or challenges that they need to overcome to implement this and usually unexpected things come as well. Now, do you guys expect, you know, more hurdles? I know you've already had all of these hurdles with the legislation over the past multiple years, but, you know, what are the big challenges that you're seeing moving forward to get this into the hands of the everyday people and get to that 18th month, uh, you know, record there? I think a pilot project with any central bank is going to be rigorous, but the executive and management team of BIT has been preparing for this moment for years. And I really think the, the hardest part is behind us. Now we deploy and build technology according to specifications, which we already have from the central bank. And it's about execution and implementation. The hardest part of bridging any new technology is actually the, when it, and especially when it comes to the regulated entities and something like the payment system of decision is the education phase of getting people used to what you're doing and getting them comfortable with the risk, the risk framework that they have to manage because the central bank's role is to ensure financial stability. That's the first role. The second one is to stimulate economic growth. And the economic growth is what we are aiming to prove. And the results that we're seeing in Barbados with M money are promising enough already that I am highly confident that in 18 months time, it's gonna be all green lights. And I, the, the next phase, um, which will be interconnecting central banks and allowing somebody in Barbados or Jamaica 
or uh, Ghana to send money anywhere across the, their, their legal and they're anywhere across the world and to have that interchanged and go directly from one person's wallet to another person's wallet with all of the infrastructure and security and accountability and even privacy in some cases that distributed ledger technology can bring. That's wonderful. Yeah, and I, I feel you on the education part. Really, it's an education for the central banks as well as the everyday people and everyone involved. And you know, even though uh, where you can clearly see the benefits of this distributed ledger technology, there's still that you know unknown and even just the difference between you know blockchain and cryptocurrency is still a, a major educational barrier for almost everybody in the world with all blockchain based projects you know and people realize that don't realize that you know you can use one without the other and have the blockchain doing other things that aren't just cryptocurrency so, the major educational uh, strides to be made, but it sounds like you guys are well on your way and uh, that you have a sustainable business. So, you know, on Bit's side, you know, where, as, as a financial services you know, provider, where are the revenue streams coming from? Are you working closely with the central bank or how does that work to sustain your guys' business? Yeah, a number of ways. One of which is, so the end money stack is the mobile money ecosystem. We deployed it in Barbados, and that's really to prove the concept, to test the products, to make sure that we iron out the kinks and to create a world-class mobile money suite with all the compliance and operations tools built in. The second phase, from the perspective of uh, the retail use of digital dollars and the commercial financial institution level, is to then make that stock licensable. So other financial institutions in the Caribbean and internationally can take the M money stack and the compliance tools and deploy their own version of, uh, of the mobile money ecosystem. And parallel to that is then the work that we do. So that's a revenue stream and it's a transaction based model and a license fee based model. One is for the technical support and ongoing maintenance and improvements to the technology stack. And the other is a revenue share, uh, agreement that M money has uh, with those institutions. The other side of the equation is the big McGuffey. That's the central bank itself, where BIT's role is to build the technology, uh, which is what we're engaged in with the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, to deploy the technology and maintain it, to make sure as a service provider to the central bank that it has 100% or 99.99% uptime that their failover systems in place that as technology and cryptography evolves that there is an evolution as well of the payment system it's if you think of one of the traditional uh money printer businesses such as de la rue and the notes and coins that we use as legal tender all of the time they'll go from color to polymer from notes without holographic prints to ones with it and there's this constant evolution of the the instrument the medium on which legal tender is represented and we expect the same thing to happen with digital legal tender so that's a long-term role and responsibility for an organization like bit as a service provider to central banks and of course what the central bank is doing is they are issuing uh, they're managing their fiscal policy so they're creating new fiat currency and there's a transaction, a transaction fee associated with that as well. So uh, the long-term revenue models center around bringing new central bank clients into the portfolio, so to speak, and interconnecting these central banks with digital fiat currency. And also something that BIT has that, to our knowledge, no one else in the world has trying to solve these type of problems, which is a production-ready and deployed mobile money and compliance ecosystem. So it's the complete turnkey solution. You can walk into any country essentially, and you can deploy the payment network and put it into the hands of end users, merchants, and financial institutions. That's great, that's great. And it's good that you guys have you know, multiple avenues. And I, I like what you're saying about the evolution of 
paper money and how they have those security features built in and how that's always being updated as you know times progress and, and that is the case as well with digital currency even just seeing new protocols that have extra security features and more innovative and I could see how you guys are going to be need to be working with these central banks you know moving forward to ensure that their technology doesn't become outdated and that they're moving ahead with the times and that we're so early in distributed ledgers that as they evolve the companies that are using that technology need to evolve with them as well. So that's, that's awesome. So if, if people are looking to get uh, more information on Bit or you know learn more, get involved, you know, are you looking for people to get involved? Or if people are just looking for more information, where's the best place to find it? We're definitely looking for people to get involved. This is a mission which is global in scope. Even though we're starting in the Caribbean, where we're proving everything. And bit.com is where you find all the information. And if anyone wants information, uh, they can reach out to me directly, Oliver at bit.com, uh, whether it's a financial institution of some nature that wants to participate, strategic partners, whether they're bringing investment capital or expertise or relationships. Again, this has been a mission that what we realized early on when we founded it is that it's way bigger than the founders itself. And I believe that bit.com is a necessary instrument of change in the global evolution of our financial ecosystem. And so visionary partners are who we've attracted so far. So far. Mm -hmm. uh, Overstock's wholly owned subsidiaries, Medici Ventures, and they are now our partners in this venture. Uh, we're part of their portfolio. And Dr. Patrick Byrne undoubtedly has a a global vision, so he saw it, as did our seed investor, our investors, Avatar Capital and Peter George. And so we're looking for more of the same, you know, people who want to change the world or on, on the one hand as partners alongside us. And as far as the financial institutions are concerned, they're very much and equally so partners. Um, if you're looking to to compete, to have an efficiency in your market, to reach a broader audience, to reach the unbanked, to actually empower people. Again, that's where we started with empowering people and that's where we intend to end. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time, Oliver. It's been a pleasure and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it also.